Hi, Muhammad. Nice to see that you have a new set of essays for us. Great job. Let's take a look at what you've written today. Okay, the first one is the complaint to the restaurant. So here's what you said. Dear sir, madam, I'm writing this letter to raise my concern about the meal we had at your restaurant, The Eats, on 20th of May, 2019. I visited your restaurant for dinner along with my wife to celebrate the wedding anniversary, but the quality of the food was immensely disappointing. All right, this is great. It's really lovely. I love that you started off um, stating why you were writing. Um, it was all really, really nice. Um, and certainly as a first impression is a very good one. There's just a little bit that I want to change in that second sentence. Um, here you said to celebrate the wedding anniversary. Um, that's not quite accurate. Instead, you wanted to say to celebrate our wedding anniversary, okay? Um, but the quality of the food was immensely disappointing. All right, and that's fine. Um, now, this is also incorrect here. Um, not we have ordered, because you've already stated to us when this occurred, and we have a clear idea of where this is in the past. Um, you, you can't use present perfect. You need to use past simple here. So we ordered a kebab platter without the apostrophe s, which we thought would be the best because I chose it from best of items. All right, I'm not really clear what that means. Are you telling me that the menu listed best items? Um, I don't know. It, it's, it, it doesn't sound plausible, first of all, and even if it is, grammatically it just sounds um, a little off. So let's change it. Um, we ordered a kebab platter, which we thought would be the best because um, it was on the specials menu. Maybe that would make sense. However, when it was served, I was surprised that the kebabs were not grilled properly and seemed, seemed half cooked, okay? When we inquired about it, one of your attendants was immensely rude. Um, this isn't a really a proper collocation. We don't say, yeah, that someone is immensely rude. We say extremely rude and told us that this is how it is been cooked here and no one has ever complained about it we had no option but to leave without eating okay so um let's fix this too and we, when we inquired about it one of your attendants was extremely rude and told us that this is how it is cooked here or this was how it uh was cooked here okay um, I would really appreciate if you could inquire about the situation and take necessary action for the food as well as for mm, as well as you're missing an as here for the rude behavior of the attendant. Furthermore, I would also like to request a refund without the for um, as we hardly had anything mainly because the food was not eatable. Okay, we usually say edible, E-D-I-B-L-E. -E. I'm looking forward to hearing that you have taken a necessary step to maintain your reputation and food quality. Otherwise, I would I would have no option but to write to your management for this inconvenience yours faithfully. Okay. Okay, so um, the good news is that there's um, a lot you've done appropriately and properly here. So your opening is appropriate, your sign-off is appropriate. Um, a lot of what you wrote is really quite good. Um, Unfortunately, you've certainly developed it and answered the question um, and the bullets appropriately as well. If there is one area that needs a little work, it's um, some of those areas of awkwardness that I already pointed out, some grammatical errors, and just some uh, just awkwardness that, you know, as I said throughout the uh, letter, that are just expressions that aren't used or don't sound right. Um, those are the things I really want you to work on. Okay, um, on the whole, though, this was nicely done. It is developed. Uh, I hope it took you under 20 minutes to write. Um, but again, I do want you to be aware of some of those those errors, both grammatical and lexical, um, throughout. Okay, so let's take a look at your um, task two. Okay, so here it is. Um, it's the one about getting married and having children in your 30s. So here's what you wrote. Experts throughout both the developing and developed world have debated whether people getting married and giving birth in their 30s is a good development or it is merely an adverse development which has grown considerably since last decade. Okay, let's change a couple of things around here, okay? So 
first of all, this is the wrong spelling of weather. This is the weather we use when we want to talk about rain, sun, snow, etc. And that's not what you want here, okay? Um, so, let's see. The other thing that I want to change is over here. Uh, giving birth in the 30s is a good uh, development, or if it is merely an adverse development which has grown considerably in the last decade. Okay, you need to add a couple of things there as well. Okay, um, I strongly agree and support this new development, which is beneficial for this society as well as for a newborn. Just any newborn, or just how about for children themselves, okay? Not newborn. It's a little limited. This essay will discuss both sides using examples, plural, from World Health Organization, Cambridge University, capital U, UK. All right, so it's fine, but again, there are a couple little things pretty much consistently in every single sentence that we need to, um, that we need to correct. So I want you to be a little more careful with some of this grammar. All right, and let's look at your body paragraphs now. On the one hand, there is ample evidence because evidence is uncountable. So there is ample evidence to prove that a child born at a younger age are at a lower risk compared to a child given birth at 30s. All right, grammatically, you've got some big problems here. So let's fix this. First of all, the way you wrote this, a child born at a younger age, it's as if the age the child is when it is born, okay? So that's not what you want to say clearly. So let's fix it. On the one hand, there is ample evidence to prove that a child born to a younger mother is at a lower risk. A risk of what? You don't tell us. Health risk? Okay, you don't really tell us what risk you're talking about. Compared to a child um, whose mother is in her 30s. All right, so you neglected to mention the age of the parent, and it's kind of strange. I mean, are we talking about the child's age when it is born? So you can see that there's uh, some incoherence here as well as some grammatical uh, error. This is largely because the women at an early age, all right, the women at an early age are healthier and more agile compared to ones in their 30s. Age is the most significant factor that affects, with an A, the fertility of a woman. Okay, uh, for example, a recent empirical research, we don't use A with research, by World Health Organization demonstrates that a woman's best reproductive years, S, are in her 20s, and most women reach peak fertility between the age of 20 to 30. However, one can argue that certainly does not mean that it is. We don't write apostrophes in IELTS, impossible to have a successful pregnancy in your later years. Okay, um... First of all, this whole paragraph deals with childbirth, okay? And I want to remind you that you're also supposed to be talking about marriage, not just having babies. So uh, for me, this raises kind of a, an alarm because my thinking is, okay, well, are we going to see something regarding marriage in the next paragraph? Okay, so that's my first concern. My second concern is um, with the actual ideas and how well linked they are, as well as how well you really developed this. So what have you really told us in this paragraph? You've said that children born to mothers in their 20s are at a lower risk, but you don't tell us what that risk is. Then you tell us that because women are healthier in their 30s, um, age, and I, here's where I think things got funny. Um, because rather than going into this risk at all, you said that women who are younger are healthier. And then I felt like this was strange, okay? And then you said that age is the factor in fertility. And then you said that women's best reproductive years are in their 20s. And then you contrasted that and saying that, yeah, but that doesn't mean you can't be pregnant successfully in your 30s. So I just felt like you had a lot of related ideas, but they didn't really link together in a logical way. Um, so it would have been, it would have made a lot more sense if you had told us like an example of the kind of risk that exists for a mother who is in her 30s. Like for example, you could have said that um, there is a higher risk of children being born with Down syndrome when the mother is over 35. 
okay? Uh, and that's an actual, um, you know, proven um, statistic. It's not really a statistic, but it's a, it's a, you know, something scientifically that, that we that we know that it's a higher. There's a higher risk of that, okay? Um, so you could have said things like that, but I just felt like you had all these ideas that really didn't work together. So here, for example, when you talked about peak fertility, what does that mean? I mean, it sounds like it's just how easy it is for a woman to get pregnant, okay? Um, and perhaps that's true. It's easier for women, but why does it have anything to do with anything else you said in terms of risk? I just, I'm hoping that makes sense to you that I can, I just felt like you didn't have really well connected ideas in this paragraph. So, um, so my, maybe what would have made sense is like I said here, if you, okay, like here, when you talked about uh, lower health risks, you could have mentioned something about, you know, children born with birth defects or something like Down syndrome when mothers are over um, 35, for example. Okay, and then you could have also said that um, another issue is that fertility declines with age and therefore what results with women giving birth um, at an older age is that we um, we have a drop in population numbers, okay? So those are the kinds of things that would have made sense um, rather than the way you organize this. And then I felt like this sentence really didn't serve you at all. It, you know, just to have this contrasting thing in the last sentence, it's kind of like, well, then why did we talk about this whole thing here? Okay, on the other hand, let's get rid of this, that. So on the other hand, it should be argued that in order to fulfill all the duties of being a parent, it is imperative that parents, S, should possess A, high level of maturity and sense of responsibility. Furthermore, they should be financially stable to give their child a better future. People reaching their 30s will most likely would, mm, 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 no, get rid of this, will. So people reaching their 30s most likely would have attained ED, all the above, compared to younger parents. For example, a recent study conducted by University of Cambridge demonstrated that the children of older parents in high income countries have better health and educational outcomes compared to children of younger parents. Therefore, it is possible to state beyond doubt that it is an encouraging change to give birth to a child in one's 30s, and one apostrophe S. All right, I like this paragraph, but we're going to talk about what the problem is in a minute. To conclude from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that marrying and subsequently attaining parenthood that's an awkward expression we don't really say attaining parenthood um you could have said and subsequently becoming a parent or entering parenthood would have been okay as well uh is an upright development for the benefit of society okay so um let me tell you straight away what the problem is this paragraph is it is exactly what i was worried about when i read this paragraph i said uh oh are we going to hear anything about marriage and i didn't Okay, so you completely skipped that, and that is really going to do you a disservice in terms of your task achievement score. An examiner is going to look at this and say, okay, well, this student only covered half the topic, and so your band score for task achievement is going to reflect that, okay? And it's not a very good score. So um, you might think, well, obviously to have, you know, a child, we're talking about marriage as well, and you said it here in your conclusion. Yep, it's not enough. You really need to talk about this this trend and what it means, because look, they, they separated it. They didn't just talk about giving birth. They talked about marriage as well, and they very clearly separated it. So most people get married and give birth. Okay, well, this means they want you to talk about both of them, and they want you to talk about them both equally. Okay, so um, that's for me, the, that's the biggest problem with this essay. And then secondly, of course, is all that awkwardness that um, I saw a lot less of in this paragraph, but certainly throughout your introduction and your first body paragraph, there was a lot of awkwardness, um, a lot of error that um, would probably not give you uh, one of those higher band scores for grammar. Okay, so those are the two things that I want you to be aware of. Um, the rest of it was fine. You clearly developed, so you wrote a lot. Um, but as I also said, I felt like this paragraph um, lacked um, coherence and cohesion. Uh, primarily cohesion, but you know, what happens is that um, 
what happens is that it will also affect your task achievement score because someone reading this is like, okay, well, on the one hand, what's the main idea? How are these ideas linked? And that will affect your coherence and cohesion score. But on the other hand, have you really developed this paragraph uh, appropriately? And the answer really is, is no, because like I said, it felt like a lot of disjointed ideas that weren't well supported. All right, so go ahead and correct these. Let's see what you'll send to us the next time. And uh, do let us know if you have any questions. Okay, good luck.